YouTube, what up though? Today I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make a basic overlay. I'm gonna give y'all all the sauce you need to be able to make a basic overlay for your photo booth events for free. Now to do this, you do need a laptop or a personal computer to be able to do this from. You really can't do this from your cell phone. But if you got you a laptop or a PC, I'm finna show you how to make these overlays real easy. It's gonna be a basic tutorial. And by the end of this video, you should be able to make a basic overlay by yourself. But before we even get into that shit, please don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, and please don't forget to follow me on IG. All right, so let's bust the computers open and get to it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to photop.com. And it's kind of like a fake version of Photoshop, but it's a photo editing software. So the first thing you want to do is go to File and go to New. And you're going to want to name your project something so you remember what it's called. I'm going to just put mine as name. And right here where it says the pixels, that's the size that you need to make your overlay. And that's going to change depending on what type of overlay you're making. But we're going to keep it simple for this video. And I'm going to just put in the settings for template 2, which is 1080 by 1080. And you also want to make sure that you make sure that the background is selected as transparent. So you got a clear background. Now, when you get your image, as long as you see like this little checkerboard image in the back, that's how you know your, your uh, background is transparent. So as long as you see that you're straight. Uh, the first thing you need to know about this photo P photo editing is how to use the undo button. It's right here under edits. And it's the first thing it says undo. If you make a mistake, you can correct it easily by clicking the undo button. Now this is the toolbar, but again, for keeping it simple, the only thing we really need to worry about is this move tool right here. And we're gonna worry about the type tool. So those are the two things we're gonna focus on for this video. All right, and the last thing that you need to know before we get started is the layers menu. That's this area over here. So I got two different pictures dragged onto this canvas. They are each called layers. You'll notice when I click each one of them, the corresponding layer lights up. And whichever one is lit is the one that's movable at the time. Also, the one that's on top is the one that covers the photo that's below it. So for example, if we move this baby photo, you see it's covering up the Cat Williams photo. Now, if we go ahead and go into the layers menu and we switch the position and we put the, the Cat Williams on top, you're gonna notice when we do that, we move Cat Williams, now he's covering up the baby. And that's important to know so when you start making your designs, you can place stuff where you wanna place them and you know how to use the layers menu now. Now, when we switch it back, you see that the baby is back covering Cal Williams. So that's how you operate the layers menu and whatnot. Okay, now we're gonna learn about the type tool. Now it's pretty self-explanatory. That's what you need to write your shit on the fucking overlays. But basically you take, the, take it and you wanna drag this little box out and it gives you an area where you can write in. Now we can adjust this box later, but just for the sake of this video, we're just gonna type just something out. Now you notice that the text is really small, so just like anything else, you would just highlight it and you can come up here to the size and you can change the size of the text. So you can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need it to be for your design. And then resize that box, you just grab the little square and drag that up. You can do the same thing with the length to make it longer or shorter, whatever you need it to be so it fits the sentence that you're trying to write. Well, you get it where you want to you click the move tool and you can move it around and just position it where you want it to now remember your text is also considered a layer so you can remove it around like you can with images now if you click over to the side right here you can bring up the blending options and that gives you a couple options to customize your text but for right now we're going to worry about the color overlay so we're just going to click that oops i'm going to click the actual tab and you notice it turn all the text red so from here we can click this box and we can change the color of the text to whatever we want to. This way we can manipulate it to whatever color scheme we're trying to get for our overlays, whatever. So you see going through this and we can just change it to any color, shade of blue, you know, purple, whatever. And once you find the color you like, click OK. Now if you need to manipulate the text after you did this, you want to change the size or anything, you can go ahead and grab the move tool and you can click one of those squares. Now, if you want to keep everything proportioned and you hold the shift 
the shift key while you drag and you can drag this and it's going to keep everything you know the height and width proportion to the way it's supposed to be so when you hold shift it keeps everything proportion and if you let's say for example you want to kind of like stretch things out you let go of the shift and you just drag it without that and then it's going to let you kind of free freestyle it and you can move it and stretch it out any kind of way you want to to fit what you're trying to do see i'm stretching it the long way and kind of curving it and shit all right so when you get ready to add images you can go to this website png wing i'm gonna put a link in the description and you could type pretty much anything in here and you see it's an array it's a lot of shit to pick from they got you type in balloons they got like probably like 10 pages of that so you type in confetti you know what i'm saying you're not gonna run out of images and these is png images meaning that they have a transparent background so when you drag them on here they're not gonna have like a white background but to keep this video basic we're just gonna go ahead and look up a basic border you know what i'm saying so let's look through here and try to find a border just for the sake of this you know keeping this real basic looking for the most basic border and do I like that? Nah. Uh, oh yeah, that's basic as fuck. Okay, so we're gonna use this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scroll down, click the download button. It might give you a little pop-up, just click close. And you go down, this might give you a little capture code shit. Go ahead and fill it up. They want me to click trucks, we're gonna click trucks. And the good thing about this size, you only got to do the capture once. So once you get it, it downloads it, and you can literally just drag it into the canvas. And you're going to notice that it's not the right size. But using those same squares I showed you before that surround the image, we can manipulate it the way we want to. If we hold shift, it keeps it proportion. But if we just free drag it, it'll just, you know, let you know, see I'm moving it like to the left and right. So I'm just trying to get it to where it's fit to the screen because we want to make sure we don't have too many gaps. And if we do got gaps that they're uniform, and it looks nice and neat. So once you get it to the way you like it, you just press enter and it's gonna lock it in place. You can still move it around if you want to. If it's like a little bit off, you can move it around with the arrow keys as long as you have it selected on the layer menu. And once you get it where you want to, just press enter again and that'll keep it where it's at. Now let's say you want to change the color of the border. We're going to go back into our blending options menu and go back to the color overlay option. And you see I changed the color. We're going to go right back to our color selection. And we're going to pick whatever color we want. So, you know, just again, to keep it basic, we're going to go ahead and pick a basic color. I think we'll do purple. Click OK. And then click OK in the blending options menu. And now we got a border that we like and we change the color to something that match our theme. Okay, now I know we said we're going to keep it basic, but let's go ahead and add just like a little bit of swag to it real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and type in our purple balloons. And see if we can find some images of some purple balloons that we could throw in there to match. Okay, well, hold on. I think I'm kind of digging these. So we're going to click those and download them the same way. And you can see that the quality of these graphics is pretty good too. You see how clean that look? And we're going to just go ahead and download that shit real quick and drag it in the same way we did everything else. There you go. Now you're going to notice it's too big again, but again, now we know how to resize by holding the shift and dragging. We can keep that proportion and make it smaller so it looks better in our overlay. So you want to make sure when you're making these things for your overlays that things aren't too crowded either because the people got to actually be in there dancing or doing whatever the fuck they're doing. So. Just keep that in mind. Now you notice this is there on the layers menu. I just want to remind y'all, whatever's on top is covering. You know what I mean? So if we switch that up, you see the balloons went behind the border. No matter where I drag it, it's behind the border. But if we go ahead and switch that back, you see it's going to go ahead and pop back up in front of the border. And that's what we're going to leave it for what we're doing today. Okay, so let's say you got a picture. They send you a picture of somebody they want to put on the overlay. You go to remove.bg.com. And you just take that picture and all you got to do is drop it anywhere in there and you wait a couple seconds and it's going to do everything for you. Just chill. And when you look back up, it's going to have that same image. And guess what? The background is removed. So from here, all you got to do is click the download button and it's going to download just like everything else. And we're going to take that download that we got and do the same thing that we've been doing and drag it over to PhotoP. 
And when it pop up, we're going to do the same thing. Shift, click, and drag to make it bigger or smaller. So however you want it, you know what I'm saying? Just drag it however you want it. Go ahead and throw uh, Uncle Cat in the corner right here. You know what I'm saying? Make sure the size is exactly how we want it. And, you know, if we wanted to manipulate it like that, we just wouldn't press the shift button when we dragged it. But, again, we're going to go ahead and undo that because we do want to make sure, especially with photos, that they stay proportioned. So you want to shift click and drag it to resize it. Right here. And just a reminder that you see he's on the top of the layer menu. But if we moved it, we could put him behind the balloon. So if that was something you was going for, we could go do that. But we're not trying to hide Cat Williams. So we're going to go ahead and put him right back on the top of the layer menu. Which really doesn't matter because he's on the other side where he wouldn't be covering that anyway. But we're going to go ahead and throw him back where he was. And replace and resize him real quick. Again, we're using shift to, you know, size his proportion wise. Just dragging him where you want him to be. And when you get done, you just press enter and that's going to lock him into place. Now let's go ahead and finish this and just add a little bit of text to it. So we're going to go ahead and click the type tool. And we're going to drag out a little box for the text like I showed you before how we want it. And you notice the text is still too big, so before we start typing, we can go ahead and make the text a little bit smaller so it'll be manageable. And we can go ahead and type our message. Um, it's going to make it say, Happy Birthday, Uncle Cat Williams. So we're going to go ahead and bust down this overlay for our Uncle Cat Williams real quick. And we're going to go ahead and highlight the text so we can go ahead and resize it so we can make it a little bit easier to read. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this text bar real quick because it's really not necessary for one line to be that low. Yeah, and we get like how you like it, just click the move button and then you can move it around wherever you want to. I know I keep re-drilling this in y'all heads about these layers and shit, but it's important to remember that, you know, you can put your text behind pictures or in front of pictures, just depending on what you want to do. It's a tool you can use when you're doing your graphic design. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back in this blended options and go ahead and add some color to this text to make it kind of match our theme that we got going on for Uncle Cat. And I'm gonna just go ahead and adjust this a little bit, make it a little bigger so it's a little bit easier to read. See, do I like it there? Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up top. And just a little extra sauce, you can go to the blender options and add what's called a stroke to it. Just like we did, uh, you click the stroke tab, and you see I put that little red outline around it. But we're gonna go ahead and change that to black, and it just makes the words look a little more defined. And you could change how thick or how thin that line is, but you just gotta you gotta kind of just play with it and see what you like. It's all personal preference. So when you find that, you click OK, and then you can position it and put it wherever you want to for your final place before we go ahead and save this. So uh, one more thing I'll remind you, if you highlight it and you go up to this little box up here, you can change the font. And there's some ways where you can add additional fonts, but that's a little more advanced for this video. So, you know, if you got more questions about that, maybe I'll do like an advanced class. But you can scroll through some of these preset fonts and change it to whatever you want to make it look a little more unique and appealing to your guest. All right, when you get everything where you want it to save it, click the file button and then go down to export. Make sure you export it as a PNG, it's the top option. It's very important if you choose any of those other options, it's gonna put a white background behind your shit and you will not be able to see the people in your booth. So go ahead and save the image. It's gonna go ahead and download it to your computer. Make sure you put it somewhere where you can find it later so you can go ahead and upload it to TouchPix. TouchPix, I got template two open because that's what the dimensions we set our shit to when we first did it in PhotoP. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to browse to the file that we just created. And 
and you see it popped up right there in that little menu so we're gonna click that and since we already created the dimensions in photo p when we drag it it should be the perfect size for this overlay and that's it so you make overlays i'm gonna go ahead and post uh the sizes for the other overlays right now so y'all can take a minute and write them down but that's pretty much it after that you just click add the overlay it's gonna turn yellow and then when it turns green you all set there you go all right so now y'all know all the steps to make a basic overlay keyword basic if you want to learn how to make a more advanced overlay i am offering one-on-one -on -one classes you want to follow me on ig and just hit me up and then we'll work something out i really hope y'all was able to find this video helpful and a lot of these principles can be applied to just regular graphic design and maybe you can use it to make some more money in the future anyway but if you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, and follow your boy IG, bro. If y'all got any questions or comments about anything I covered in this video, please leave those questions in the comment section below. Thank y'all for watching again. Peace.